Hi, I'm Mike Marin, and in this video, we'll discuss screening and diagnostic tests and the relevance of concepts such as sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. In particular, we will compare and contrast screening and diagnostic tests, define sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. We'll talk a bit about why we care about these. We'll look at how to calculate them using 2x2 two two tables. And finally, we'll talk about when using a 2x2 two two table will lead us to an incorrect calculation of the positive predictive value and negative predictive value. Screening tests are used exactly as the name suggests to screen individuals. They are given to individuals who are not yet demonstrating any symptoms but are considered to be at risk. The intention is to identify individuals early on before they start to show symptoms. Diagnostic tests are administered with the intention of confirming the disease or confirming that the person does not have the disease. They are generally given to individuals who are showing symptoms or who have tested positive in a screening test. Screening tests are intended to identify early on those who may have the disease while diagnostic tests are intended to confirm the presence or absence of the disease. Screening tests are administered on asymptomatic individuals who are at risk, while diagnostic tests are administered on those who are symptomatic or those who have tested positive in a screening test. Screening tests tend to be cheaper and non-invasive, while diagnostic tests tend to be more expensive and often are more invasive, although necessary to confirm or refute a positive screening result. Screening tests tend to have higher sensitivity and higher false positive rates, so as to not potentially miss out on an individual with the disease. Diagnostic tests should have high sensitivity as well as high specificity. And yes, these are terms that we have not formally defined yet. Soon we will provide a definition for sensitivity and specificity. A positive test result on a screening test generally leads to a more invasive diagnostic test while a positive test result on a diagnostic test usually leads to treatment of the disease. Screening tests are usually cheap, but the cost should still be justified, while diagnostic tests tend to be more expensive but are necessary. Now, some notation and definitions. We'll use the letter D to indicate the presence of disease and the letters ND to indicate not disease. We'll use a plus sign to indicate a positive test result and a negative sign to indicate a negative test result. We define the prevalence as the probability of the disease or as the percentage of the population with the disease. The sensitivity is the probability of getting a positive test result given that the individual actually has the disease. That is, what is the likelihood of a diseased individual getting a positive test result? In other words, how often will our test correctly diagnose a diseased individual? This also gets called a true positive. The complement of this is a false negative, testing negative when one actually has the disease. These two should sum up to 1 or 100%. That is, given that an individual has the disease, they will test positive or they will test negative. The probability of an individual who has the disease testing positive plus the probability of an individual who has the disease testing negative will have to add to 1 or 100%. The specificity is the probability of getting a negative test result given that the individual does not have the disease. That is, it tells us the likelihood of a non-diseased individual testing negative. In other words, how often will our test correctly identify a non-diseased individual as being negative? This also gets called a true negative. And again, its complement is a false positive, testing positive when one actually does not have the disease. And as before, these two should sum up to 1 or 100%. Given that an individual does not have the disease, they will either test positive or they'll test negative. The sensitivity lets us know how often we correctly diagnose a diseased individual, and the specificity lets us know how often we correctly diagnose a non-diseased individual as not having the disease. These are nice to know, but they don't tell us the whole story. Suppose that I were to be given this test, and I got a positive test result. How likely is it that I actually have the disease? The positive predictive value can help us with this. The positive predictive value tells us Given that an individual has tested positive, 
how likely is it that they actually have the disease? Similarly, the negative predictive value tells us, given that an individual has tested negative, how likely is it that they actually do not have the disease? They help us know something about how reliable or how accurate a positive and negative test result are. Now, consider developing a screening test. Our goal is to be able to classify an individual as diseased or not diseased before the onset of any symptoms. Suppose that the development of our test will work as follows. We will take a blood sample and we will look at the level of something in the blood. Let's call it blood level of A. If the blood level of A is high and above some threshold, which we'll call X, we'll screen them as being positive for the disease. If the blood level of A is low and below the threshold X, we'll screen them as negative for the disease. To repeat that again, a blood level above X means they test positive for the disease. A blood level below X means they test negative for the disease. After taking these measurements, we'll wait for many years to pass and we'll examine these same individuals to see who has developed and who has not developed the disease of interest. Note that this will help us to develop a test that can be used to identify individuals who are likely to develop the disease before they show any symptoms. Also note that this design is prospective in nature and follows a cohort of individuals forward in time. Suppose that the data ended up looking as follows. 160 confirmed cases of the disease, 1,340 confirmed non-cases of the disease. We also see that 175 individuals were screened as positive based on their blood level of A being greater than that threshold X. And we see that 1,325 were screened as negative out of the 1,500 total individuals. Now let's use this table to calculate the sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value. First, we can calculate the prevalence. We can see that we have 1,500 total individuals in our sample, and we also see that 160 are confirmed cases. This would lead us to an estimate of 160 out of the 1,500, or 10.7% prevalence. We can consider this to be an unbiased estimate of the population prevalence, as we followed a random cohort of individuals forward in time. The sensitivity, is the probability of testing positive given that they have the disease. We can see that 160 individuals have the disease and of those 140 tested positive and so the sensitivity is 140 out of 160 or 87.5 percent. The specificity is the probability of testing negative given that they do not have the disease. We can see that 1,340 people did not have the disease and of those, 1,305 tested negative, and so the specificity is 1,305 out of the 1,340, or 97.4%. The positive predictive value is the probability of having the disease given that they tested positive for it. We can see that 175 people tested positive for the disease, and out of those, 140 actually developed the disease, and so the positive predictive value is 140 out of 175, or 80%. We can think of this as being an unbiased estimate as the individuals were followed forward in time and the development or non-development of the disease was not manipulated. An example where the disease rate would be controlled or manipulated is in a case control type study design. The negative predictive value is the probability of not having the disease given that they tested negative for it. We can see that 1,325 people tested negative, and out of those, 1,305 did not have the disease. And so the negative predictive value is 1,305 out of the 1,325, or 98.5%. It's important to note here that we could fine tune this test by playing around with that threshold value of X that we use to screen as positive or negative. For example, if we wanted to increase the sensitivity of this test, we could decrease that threshold value of X that's used to define a positive test result. In other words, we could lower the blood level of A that is required to get a positive test result. This would lead to more positive test results in general, more true positives, as well as more false positives. Increasing the sensitivity of our test would also lead to decreasing the specificity of the test. Take some time to think about why this is and reconcile these in your head. 
It's worth having a short note here that the use of a 2x2 table to calculate positive predictive value and negative predictive value will not always work. If the data were not collected in a prospective manner, but instead were collected through a case control type design, calculation of the positive predictive value and the negative predictive value directly from a 2x2 table will be biased. When the prevalence of the disease in our sample does not represent the prevalence of the disease in the population, calculating PPV and NPV this way will be biased. When the prevalence of a disease is low in a population, we may need to use methods other than following a cohort over time. Instead, we may decide to take confirmed cases and non-cases of a disease and administer our screening test on them. For example, we may take 500 confirmed cases and 500 confirmed non-cases and administer the screening test on them and see who tests positive and negative. Doing this will ensure that we end up with enough cases in our sample for it to be useful. But it also means that our proportion of individuals in our sample with the disease will not be representative of the population. In order to calculate the PPV and the NPV for such data, we would require the use of Bayes' theorem. This is a topic that's beyond the scope of this intro video, although it was important and necessary to acknowledge and mention this. I hope this video helped you better understand the concepts of sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, how they differ and how they're useful. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out our other instructional videos.